because no one demanded it. No one. It is a scavenge lord loot video time. Now, I scavenged for about uh, three hours this morning in two different subdivisions, and this was after a rainstorm, so uh, a lot of the items that I found, including these clothes, are actually still wet. But a surprising amount of items were very salvageable, including a lot of books that you'll see pretty soon. But let's look at the clothing first. Here we have a uh, purple sequency top, a few pajama bottoms, some skirts. This is a skirt or a dress, depending on where you wear it. Uh, some denim shorts, skirt. One fairly nice dress, or top, and lots of t-shirts. I've actually already gotten rid of the t-shirts that were stained, or that uh, Yokel Elementary graduating class of 2013, items that no one would want. And these are the t-shirts that are left. They're primarily women's and kids' sizes. Day. And over here we have some other t-shirts and other miscellaneous tops. These are all in very good condition. Some of them are name brand pieces like Old Navy here. The only thing that's wrong with this top is that it has some white dog hair on it. And enough about the clothing. Let's move in and see how... Uh, the Peculiars. Uh, I got a recent Sunday newspaper here. I found four pairs of shoes this morning. Oh goodness gracious, look at those little girls cowboy boots. And those boots are in fantastic condition. So are these cleats. There's, see, here are the soles. Nothing wrong with it. Somebody probably just outgrew those. Now the work shoes here are steel toed but there is something wrong with these the soles are worn out now uh, if I still had my job of washing vehicles for a travel company I couldn't wear those because they I'm standing in water all day the water would soak right through the shoes but if I'm required to have a job in a drier location that requires steel-toed boots. These actually fit me. I tried them on. So I'm going to hold on to these. And then we're going to move on to this mysterious white bag right here. And I'm going to set the camera down because this is the type of video that you really should not make yourself without a camera person. Learn from my mistakes. I don't have a camera person available today, so you get what you get. And I wanted to show you this reef. I had been keeping it in the plastic bag in order to protect it. I'm not going to be using this reef because my front door is metal and I'm currently at war with my homeowners association. But I can put that right back into the bag and it can go to the Goodwill and someone will appreciate it. Now, I found a box for a ceiling fan, and it did not have the fan inside, but it did have some pieces of the ceiling fan kit. And I recently installed two ceiling fans that I had salvaged in my own home, and I'm um, in the process of, I might install a third in our bedroom, but I'm going to need more parts before I do that. So, uh, salvaging parts as I go along, I might be able to use this brace at some point. Uh, a couple of electrical wire caps, and copper wire is always handy. I actually, I could have used this when I was working with my solar panels a week ago. Uh, another bicycle helmet, I find a lot of these. A pair of reading glasses that are still in fairly good shape. Um, those are nice reading glasses, too, with the case. Oh, some boxers. This was a camera that I found with a printer. And all of the boxes, all the documentation, all the cords, all the everything. Does it work? I don't know yet. I'm going to put some batteries in here. I'm going to charge it up. Or 
that's actually a chargeable battery. I'm going to find out later. I found uh, a knee brace and an elbow brace and a neck brace. I'm also going to have to put some batteries in this to find out if it works. Now well, this is just a bag I found which is going to be very handy for carrying all those that clothing to the Goodwill. I found a, oh, a few of my Coke reward points. This is a Darth Vader Pez dispenser and of course everyone wants a Darth Vader Pez dispenser. Some fishing line, a almost complete reel of it. Over here we have some mailing envelopes that I will pass along. A sealed container of hot chocolate mix. More envelopes. One scarf. I'll actually put that with the clothing. These, this is a new package of, what do they call these? Wedding favor boxes. That'll go to the Goodwill. Someone will be pleased to find that on sale. Found a lot of uh, grape jellies for some reason. This is a broken purse. Now, Scott, why are you salvaging a broken purse? Well, I'm doing it because of all of these beads here. My friend who makes her own costume jewelry will, ha will have very good use of all these beads that are strung out throughout this purse. And this is a lid to a crock pot. I can just imagine someone going to a Goodwill for a new crock pot because they're stopped working or they broke their glass lid and they're grumbling all the way there and then they get there and they see a glass lid that fits their crock pot and they say, oh, I don't need to buy a new crock pot after all. But I got a basket that I'm going to use. Now, I wanted to show you these books. This is interesting. I found a few um, paperback books that are in adequate condition. They need to dry out some more, but um, these are eventually going to be listed on Amazon. I actually have a couple of shelves of books that I need to get around to listing on Amazon. And I also found several hardcover books, including uh, school textbooks and seven Dr. Seuss books, Heavens to Murgatroyd, in just absolutely fantastic condition. The rain didn't touch these. This one needs to be cleaned. It's got a spot on the outside. Okay, we were looking at these books when we were rudely interrupted by my memory card telling me that it was full. Moving along, we have this collection of Dr. Seuss books. We have Shark vs. Train. I look forward to reading this. And even more school books. School books going down, down, down for a long time. And some of these are really expensive hardcover books, which are probably not the current edition, so they aren't actually useful for students. I'm going to have to research that in order to find out. But I have done moderately well uh, selling school books through Amazon before. And Amazon, well, when I say moderately well, I mean I might come away with $5 profit on a book. And that would be a really good sale. And Amazon, the vast majority of these books are going to sell for one cent plus shipping and handling. I sell, I ship them through media mail, hopefully to some place which is close to where I live and which isn't usually the case. And thus I'm spending less on shipping than Amazon is paying me to ship items. And that's where the profit lies. And we're talking like only a few cents profit per book. I'm, I'm poor. I'm a minimum wage guy. And that's not worth even my time. 
but there is a certain uh, sense of fulfillment and of duty that I have that in relation to saving books from going to the city dump. Okay. I'm a salvager. It's gotten into my blood. Now, I also wanted to show you these CDs that I found. I was very excited when I saw these. Now, uh, here is a case of CDs. There were a lot of drivers that I threw away. This is this looks like a copy of Corel Draw, almost certainly pirated. Yeah, we're going to throw that out. I don't deal with pirated software. There's a lot of tremendously good freeware out there. Uh, blank CDs, CDRs with their jewel cases, a uh, license key, that's always useful, even more blank CDRs, and PC games, many of which are still in their original wrappers. I got two copies here of World of Warcraft, two copies of World of Warcraft Burning Crusade, one copy of Wrath of the Lich King, uh, then we have World of Warcraft Cataclysm. I have two copies of that. These all have the CDs in them. Two copies of World of Warcraft Cataclysm Behind the Scenes DVD, still in their original plastic. Two copies of the Cataclysm soundtrack, still in their original plastic. And two copies of Star Wars The Old Republic, my Bioware on CD. And I glanced at these CDs, they didn't have any obvious bad scratches on them. But I don't know until we actually uh, try using them, how well they're going to work. Maybe out of these two sets I'll get one working set. But this is interesting because this is the specific game that a friend of mine has been wanting to try. And my wife gave this friend uh, her old laptop recently, so I know that she's going to be able to play it. And everything is going to be very good in the world. So, out of all these items, the, I'm going to let my friends pass through them. I'm going to keep, oh, the shoes. Um, I'm going to keep these books for a while, but try to sell them. I'm going to keep the My Coke reward points. Uh, very little of this I'm going to keep myself. Uh, those electrical scraps right there. Uh, I'm going to let my friends pick through them, keep what they want. Everything else goes to the goodwill. Now, somebody is watching this video and saying, Aha! It's a tax scheme! He's going to get these receipts from the goodwill, and he's going to claim them on his taxes. And that's actually a very good deduction. It just happens to be wrong. I don't actually uh, itemize my taxes. I and my wife combined don't make nearly enough to, to itemize our taxes. We're much, much better off taking the standard deduction. And we both work full time. So uh, that's not why I uh, do that. That's not why I document items, but um, that's a subject for another video, actually. Uh, if someone is actually interested in what my Goodwill scheme is, I can make a video about that. Just leave a comment for me somewhere, and I'll find it ev eventually, and I'll probably make a video about that fairly soon, if anyone is interested. Otherwise, I need to pick up some clothes that the wind knocked on the ground. And I need to pack all this stuff away before my wife gets home and wants to use the garage. So, I've got a busy day ahead of me. Thank you for watching.